Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another tutorial on how to build a custom Gutenberg block for WordPress. In this tutorial, we're gonna continue the work that we did so far on our custom block and we're gonna improve the way we handle the CSS, the custom styling for the editor side and the front end side. Before continuing though, we need to update a bunch of things because since the release of the last tutorial, a new version of WordPress was released, version 5.4, where a couple of changes were introduced in the Gutenberg API and in the 2019 theme which I'm using to do these tutorials. So let's take care of those before jumping on our lesson. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for an affordable and reliable cloud provider for your website, SkySilk is the answer for you. The intuitive dashboard interface allows you to quickly deploy one of the many built-in templates in just a few clicks or directly upload your custom ISO. It doesn't matter if you're a senior developer with hundreds of websites or a student looking to experiment with your first cloud server, SkySeal can accommodate all your needs with powerful machines starting at just $5 per month. SkySilk also comes with many other perks, like a convenient reward system where you can redeem Sky points to pay for your VPS, a never-growing Discord community, and lightning-fast customer support. Click the link in the description below and use the promo code Alicat SkySilk to get 25% off of your personal cloud VPS. First of all, the initial change that we have to do, we have to access our package.json. We have to scroll down and access the section where the npm run watch, the watch command was written. Um, up until now, I don't know why the watch command was able to actually, whenever I was changing a JavaScript side, was able to run the npm run build to rebuild all, all the JavaScript. Now it doesn't seem to work anymore, so I need to manually specify the uh, folder where my JavaScript file is located. So src slash, and then we can say all the files that they have a JS extension. These package here, I don't know how you pronounce it, Chokidar, basically is a watcher that takes care of watching, literally watching any change that happens to the files that you specify after it. So in this case, it was just listed all the SCSS files, but if you put another space here and you write your JavaScript file location, in my case is inside src folder and the index.js but we can specify all the javascript file these will run normally so we can if we access our terminal do a simple npm run watch and this should compile everything and take care of watching all the changes to both our scss files and our javascript files perfect the next thing that i have to do i have to actually update the javascript file because some Thing changed because some changes were introduced in the Gutenberg API. So first of all, uh, we need to update the edit method, which is not a method anymore. This was turned into an attribute that uh, handles an arrow function. So we need to specify a column here. So now this is an attribute and inside here, we still have to open a function, open a method, but this has to be done with the arrow function. The arrow function is basically the same way of writing something like function and then opening the regular brackets and then the curly brackets. But the arrow function, other than being uh, the looking cooler, so you can look like the cool kid on the block, it also doesn't change the scope of your object or the class you're in or the function you're in. So you're not gonna have any problem in tapping these variables because you haven't changed the scope. Uh, we have to do exactly the same on our safe method. So turn this into an attribute and then use the beautiful arrow function. Perfect. If we save this file and we access our terminal, we see that the npm run watch command is compiling everything. The other thing that we have to do, uh, I have to fix a small thingy that I left in the previous tutorial it was just a tiny mistake. So I wrote class here in the CTA container. This is not correct because we are not in a regular um, HTML markup scenario. As you notice, we always wrote the class name, which is the attribute used by this type of JavaScript convention. So we need to write class name in order to not have an error whenever we save our file. And I did the same mistake also in the save method because of course I copy pasted that section. So 
I left it there. Nice. We fixed everything. If we access our WordPress installation, we refresh, everything should look and behave as expected. Awesome. So this is the current situation. We have our title description. We can upload a background image. We can change the overlay color and we can change the overlay opacity. But in order to achieve this type of responsiveness through CSS, we created some uh, custom classes here in our blocks.scss. We have here the CTA container, CTA overlay, and then all the elements have a position relative. And we copy pasted all these class exactly the same in our style editor. So this style is present both in the front end and in the back end in our editor script. As I said in the previous lesson, this is not the best because it's we force ourselves to duplicate this code. And we're also leveraging the built-in style of the theme. We're not creating a standalone block that works by itself. So this also means that we're loading this CSS code even if we're not using our call to action block, which is not very optimal. I mean, it's just a few lines, but why loading something that we don't need? So in this lesson, we're gonna see how to create some unique CSS styling in order to use it only if we're actually using our custom block. Let's do it. So let's create a new folder in the SAS folder in order to handle our custom style. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Alicad, but of course you can call it with the name of your block or however you want. And inside here, I'm going to call it uh, style.scss, something very, very simple and straightforward. And I'm going to cut this style here in from the style editor paste it in my style.css and then in the blocks editor, I'm going to simply delete what I wrote here. Perfect. Now that we did that, our, our CSS was rebuilt and compiled everything. If we refresh this page, of course, the style it's gone completely because we removed that. So what we have to do, we now have to tell our building scripts, our NPM run script that we have this new file style scss but we don't want this style.scss to be included inside the full scss style but we want to generate a custom style something standalone like uh, like a style.css here or something more custom let's say i want to generate an alicad.css file that i can include by myself so let's update the package.json and before doing that we need to actually stop the running of our script. So let's hit control C. What we can do here, we can basically copy paste what it's happening here. It's very, very straightforward. So you can see here, we have a build style action that uses the node SAS module from NPM and accepts a source file, which is style.css, which is scss, which is here, and accepts an output file, which is style.css that gets generated here. And then we can specify some options some attributes like the output style is expanded. And then we can use the post CSS NPM package to take care of formatting everything like all the variables and all the other things that we have. So let's actually simply duplicate this line, rename it because we cannot use the same name for two different scripts. So we can use build uh, alicad. So let's build myself. And here we can specify the location of my custom style, which is inside the SAS folder, and then the alicat folder and style.scss. Perfect. The output, I want this to be alicat.css. Awesome. And this is it. We don't need to do anything else because we're using the prefix build column, which means that in our build actual build script, the NPM is taking care of running all the scripts with the star is just a general grab everything, all the scripts that start with this prefix build column. So also my new script, the build alicat was included. Awesome. So now we can reopen our terminal and type once again, NPM run watch and everything should be compiled and built properly. And if we scroll up here in the base root of our file, our directory, look what we have here. We have the alicad.css with all my classes here that we're properly compiling starting CSS. Awesome. Now what we have to do, we need to tell Gutenberg, we need to tell WordPress that I want this file the alicad.css to be included 
only when I generate a custom block, only when I'm using my custom CTA block. So what we have to do, we need to extend the PHP side of our Gutenberg implementation. So if we access our ink folder and we go into gutenberg.php, which is the file that I created in order to create my custom block here in the Allegat Gutenberg block, the register block type has other type of attributes that we can specify. The other attribute that I want to implement is the style attribute. And the style attribute, of course, accepts another uh, type of unique name of a register style name. In our case, I'm going to call this custom CTA-CSS. This custom CTA-CSS, I need to register it with a similar method to the WP register script. So we can use the WP underscore register underscore style. And the WP register style accepts, of course, the unique name of our style, which is going to be custom CTA.CSS. Then the location, which I'm going to brutally copy this because I don't want to rewrite it from scratch. And my location is inside the base directory of our template forward slash alicad.css. And then we need to specify an empty array because this CSS file doesn't depend on any other type of file. And that's it. We can leave it like that. If you're confused about these WP register style, I strongly suggest you to go back and check the premium theme development series or the plugin development series to learn uh, what all these parameters are about and how you can customize the way you register your script and your style. But for now, this will be good enough. So if we save this and we access our editor, we refresh this page. Look what we have here. The style is back in place. But also, if we look at the post that we just created. Look at that. The style is also there, but you can see that actually our overlay is covering the entire page. This is kind of a mistake because we forgot to write something in CSS. So if we open back our style.css, our CTA container should have a position relative in order to prevent this position absolute from going everywhere. So Let's go back in our front end, let's refresh, and now it works properly. Like all these other elements and the overlays containerize inside the container, it doesn't go anywhere. That's awesome. So we know that our CSS is properly loaded. And of course, if we access our network side and we check the CSS, if we refresh this page, look what we have here. We have our style.css, print style. These are all the things that are coming by default from the theme, but we also have our alicad.css. There's also another attribute that we can implement in the register block, which is the editor style attribute. The editor style attribute it allows us to implement a unique CSS style, which is going to be loaded only in the editor block. So only in the edit post page and not in the front end. This is very useful if we want to create something custom. For example, if we want to have a different view, a different look and some different visual output, a different UI of our block only in the editor style and we don't need that to be translated in the front end, we can easily customize it that way. So why don't you do that for the next lesson? Create another CSS file. Register that CSS file in our package.json in order to be compiled as a standalone file and then add it as an editor style and customize your custom block only in the editor view, not in the front end. Well, that's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.